You're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Papp, as we so tragically witnessed in Baltimore, the continuous operation of our ports should not be taken for granted. What is Merritt doing to help ports become more resilient to rising oceans and extreme weather events? Sorry, I thank you for that question. Um, we are taking a number of actions, but I think it, uh, I would like to take that question for the record. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Rear Admiral Van, uh, President Biden issued an executive order granting the Coast Guard stronger authorities to address cybersecurity. So building on what my colleague just asked, how is the Coast Guard using this new authority and to explain how this differs from the existing authority the Coast Guard already had. Ranking Member, appreciate that question. Uh, as I indicated before, the executive order was uh, a clarification of our Magnuson Act authorities where the captain of the port has the authority to respond to th risks and, and threats and attacks, be they, be they physical, be they uh, any, any threat. This executive order added cyber to clarify, to your point, existing authorities. So the way we are using those authorities is uh, continuing to do our mission in, in prevention. And then as cyber threats emerge or attacks occur, uh, we would captains of the port could leverage that authority that comes with the executive order to respond by, uh, con by uh, directing the movement or the, the operations of port operations of vessels. Um, as I mentioned in my previous answer, one of the first actions we took was a maritime security directive in association with the executive order uh, to direct the assessment of, of port cranes uh, due to that, uh, the criticality of that node of the system and the, uh, the uh, prevalence of foreign manufactured cranes. So th these are actions that uh, we've taken and that we are poised to take should there be uh, a threat or an attack that occurs. Thank you. Admiral Arguin, I'd like to take a moment to thank you for your commitment to addressing sexual assault and sexual harassment in the commercial maritime industry. Your efforts have not gone, not gone unnoticed among merchant mariners, the very people who need your help. How would you assess the state of change in the industry and how far do we still have to go? Uh, ranking member, uh, thank you for, for the compliment, but it is a team sport. Um, we, have, um, we have taken um, directed efforts to engage with uh, maritime training providers, with uh, industry representatives, seafarers uh, around the nation to ensure that everyone understands their responsibilities uh, to change the culture associated with, with maritime. I think this is not a, there's not a finish line associated with, um, with changing a culture. It is an expectation that there is a, there is a, uh, there is an, a culture that is established to ensure that every single person feels safe coming to work and that they feel valued. And so that's going to be a continuous assessment of culture. And, and we really get to the point where what happens between two individuals in the engine room or on, in a, in a, on the bridge and that interaction where both people feel valued, feel respected, that's the, that really is the standard. And when that fails, um, or if that fails, that there's an expectation for accountability. And so that's going to be a continuous effort. I don't think we get to snap the chalk line and say we're done. I think that's going to be a continuous um, shared responsibility, not, with, not only just with, uh, with industry to change that culture, but then to ensure that if that culture does not stand forward, we, uh, we are in a position to hold individuals accountable. With organizational leadership changes that occur, I would submit to you that real cultural change will be determined on the systems changes that occur within the organization. So as leadership changes, those are sustainable. And so I encourage you to look at it from that perspective. Getting achievements now is one thing, but making sure the culture is ever evolving to ensure we don't have what we've had in the past continue. So thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.